Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how you take a um, design that's intended, say, for the laser and turn it into a 3D printable object. So this uh, this was inspired a little bit by Norbert Tech. So Norbert, a uh, longtime viewer, brought up the question when I did the, uh, the, the holder for the Lysol container and I laser cut it. And he says, hey, I don't have a laser cutter, so I've got a 3D printer, So, but I think it's a cool idea. So what I decided is this is a good point. So uh, what I want to do in this video is show how you can take um, something that's, say, designed for the laser and convert it to the 3D printer. So what I've done is I've broken up the object, and actually I did this when I laser cut it for the, the size of the pieces. I've got the object over here, so I've broken it up into pieces. So this, is, for example, is the top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to import these into Tinkercad, and then we're going to assemble them there. So I've already got the back piece uh, in Tinkercad. Now I've exported these as just plain SVGs uh, from Inkscape, and I've saved them as a file. Now there's a few anomalies with the way that Tinkercad imports it, and we're using the beta version, and this is a little bit wanky compared to the prior standard version and I actually happen to like the uh, prior standard version a little bit better but anyways uh, we're going to import the next one so what we're going to do and I'll show you what the problem is that's my whole point of that ramble so we got the top so I've already imported the back so I'm going to do the top next and then I'm going to go import now one of the things you notice is that the length here is 548 by 459 now for some reason, this this thing kind of de decides it likes to import it. I think it's pixels or something. These definitely not millimeters. So what we have to do is change those dimensions. So this is where, when we look at Inkscape, what we want to do is uh, I want to make sure I get the top here, is go up here and get the the measurements in millimeters of this. So it's it's 130 by 155. So when we go back here into um, uh, into Tinkercad, what we're going to actually enter is we're going to enter 155 and 130 into these boxes and then hit import. Now the, the odd thing about this is in, in, in the olden days it used to allow you to select a height uh, for it but now it just sort of seems to default a height when it brings it in so I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing. Uh, so it might take a minute to import the file depending on how fast the connections are and how fast their servers are running. So you may have to give it a minute to, to bring the object in. Okay, so we now have the uh, piece in Tinkercad. And you notice it's set it to 10. I'm going to knock this down to 5. So that's what I've got the other piece set to 5. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the shift key. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees. And we're going to bring this around, and we're going to set it here. And notice it's negative 62, so we're going to hit 0. So it sits right up there. And, uh, yep, that's sort of what it looks like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the align, and we're just going to set this guy up. And uh, I think I need to nudge it forward. Now, really aligning on these tabs, I mean, this is just where you want to put it to to line it up. The tabs won't exist in, in the finished product because we'll join all this together. Uh, and then so what we're going to do is we're now going to import the base and so the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing. And again you see here the dimensions. So we're going to the base is the same dimensions as the top. So we're going to go ahead and enter the same dimensions here. And then import. And then again, we're going to change this to 5. Whoops, that fingered it. I want 5, not 4. And then we're going to do roughly the same thing. We're going to hold down the shift key, rotate this around so it's at 90 degrees. We're going to bring it up so it sits at the bottom of the work plane. And then we're going to highlight all of these. And then we're going to do an align just so all of these are centered. And then what we're going to do is simply walk this one backwards. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. I hate when that happens. Sorry, I'm going to have to realign this real quick just to get things back on track. 
All right, so now we do this. We're just going to bring this down to the bottom of the tabs, and that's super. And um, now we just need to bring in the side. So we're only going to do one side and just replicate it. There's no reason to bring in two. They're, uh, they're, they're a little bit different on the... Um, there's a left and a right on the uh, machine, but not on um, here. So, okay, we need to put the dimensions in, and so this is going to be, um, those are kind of odd dimensions. So this is going to be 140 by, um, yep, 80, we'll just make it 85. And we'll import. Okay, we got the piece uh, imported, and again, same basic uh, routine. We're going to bring this guy up, and uh, actually now we need to flip this guy around. I need to find my uh, horizontal rotation arrow. So again, hold the shift key down, and there I go. I am just set. So I need to just do this. Now I may have to shrink this guy up a little bit. Um, so I need to bring him up. And actually what I, what I was thinking originally of doing, uh, the other thing I gotta do, I need to do, is I need to change this guy to five also. Um, what I was going to do initially is simply just use, uh, uh, you know, a box over here to fill in for this, but I kind of wanted, decided to go ahead and import this piece just to, uh, so you guys could see. So I'm going to shorten this, this piece up a little bit because the dimensions on this are changing a little bit from uh, the scaling because I've had this scaled for a three millimeter piece of acrylic and I'm now placing this into a... Uh, five millimeter piece of plastic so my, my dimensions are going to be off a little bit so I'm going to drop this to 135 um, kind of splitting the difference and um, I think that, that looks okay. You know, now one of the things I'm thinking, I might have not really a problem, but let, let's let's think about this a second. So you can see I have, because I had tabs uh, before, and the tabs are still there because they're holes in the original object that's coming in. Now, what's happening is you can see that there are tabs here so I'm inserting those tabs into here but the tabs still are going to exist they won't I don't think they won't fill in perfectly um, so I don't know maybe I should use uh, just a cube now nah, I don't think I'm going to So this is up one. I'm going to make this up four. And you see it's got a little bit of a gap since I should be up. What am I up on the base? Uh, base is zero. I'm not quite sure why I'm showing a gap there at four. So let's make this 3.5. Uh, I don't want a gap. Uh, I'm going to actually move this to three just to make doubly sure I don't have a gap. Okay, so I went offline for a minute to think about this, actually. And one of the things I did is I placed the, a box on this side, and then I have the standard piece on the other side right here. And what I think I've decided to do is to go with the box over this piece. And, and I'll share with the, the reason why. I want to take a look at something down here. So, uh, As you can see, I used the align to bring it to the front here. What I'm going to do is on the back, though, on this section right here, is I'm going to leave it a little bit proud. And the reason I'm going to do that 
is this, well, first off, is aesthetically I want to fill in all the holes. I don't want any of the gaps here, and I'm afraid that the tab alignment's not going to be perfect enough and that it will leave a hole. And I could do other gyrations to fix it, but why when I can go this route? The other piece is uh, I am going to go with a heavier infill, probably about a 40% infill with some rather thick shells because this base is going to take a lot of torque on it uh, from being pushed down because when you close the lid on the container, that's what's going to take the, the brunt of most of the pressure. So with this, the, the way the infills, I think, will be interlaced will provide an extra strength at the base of this. And uh, I think that will be beneficial versus if I just have it flush, if that makes sense. Because what's going to happen is there's going to be a crisscross architecture for the infill in here. And at 40%, it's going to be pretty dense, which is going to give me a big surface area inside of there. So I think I'm going to go with that route. And then what I'm going to do is simply... Uh, abandon these two pieces or that piece uh, and then just simply replicate this piece and move it over and uh, you know again place it in so I'm going to just select these and do an align that looks like it's already aligned to the front so there we go everything seems to be in I just want to make sure that this is sitting on the bottom so see this number here it's zero so it's on the bottom. Uh, I want to make sure this guy is all the way. Uh, so he's that wide. And there's it. there's the bottom figure. So he's on the bottom. And again, he's on the bottom. Or she. He, she. Um, giving three-dimensional objects genders, I guess. Anyways, um... It looks like it's all about together, so uh, everything is, is aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to group all this together, and Norbert, there it is. So I think this could be 3D printed out. So tell you what, I've rambled enough in this episode and showed you know how we can go from an Inkscape project like this over to a 3D printed object like this. So again, if you run across something on Thingiverse or etc., where you know it's a um, you know, been a laser cut object, you want to assemble it in a 3D printed world, you know, here's how you can go about doing it. So tell you what, again, I've rambled enough in this episode. In the next episode, we're going to actually print this out, uh, probably on the one how, take a look at the time lapse. I think it'd be pretty cool. And we'll go from there because I don't think we're going to need any supports. So the circle ought to be very interesting to print out. So if you found this interesting, please give the like a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget the swag shop up in the corner and the subscribe button will be coming up if you're not a subscriber. If you are, thank you very much. And hey, we'll see you at the one how in the next episode and print this bad boy out. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.